is a combination of raw umber, <laughs> excuse me, and Payne's Gray. And I'm painting on a canvas sheet. I did not uh, gesso this one. I encourage you to do that at all times. I did not do that with this, with this one. Um, I've got my nine scales here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on this last piece of tape. So we have a board, nice border. Make sure you guys can see that. All right. I guess that's okay. Let me get a little closer, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to be using a series of bristle brushes for this exercise. Which I normally start my paintings out with a bristle brush, um, these demos especially. And then when we get the glazing, then um, I tend to use a softer bristle or nylon. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my flat, I mean a bright, and I'm going to tone the canvas. We've talked about that. Um, for this particular exercise, I'm just going to tone it with a little bit of water and my darkest color, which is my Payne's Gray and Raw Umber Mix. So I'm just going to put a little, a little water on my brush here and uh, a little bit of paint. Just kind of get it down as fast as I can. I'm using golden acrylic paints. So the mixture that I made, um, actually this is a pretty good one because it's pretty, really solid dark gray. Sometimes I do them in there. They tend to be, um, you know, a little on the brown side sometimes. They tend to be a little bit on the paint's gray side sometimes. But this one seems like it's bright. Right down the middle. I don't know, maybe a little paint's gray heavy, I don't know. So I'm just, as you can see, just some quick marks. I mean, you're not, you know, you don't have to do it the same way, but the trick with the whole helping point with toning your canvas is to is to level it with a whole nother hue as opposed to the starkness of uh, the titanium white color that just so tends to come in. And that can help people. Sometimes who may get hung up, um, you know, or hesitant, let's say, because they're not sure what their first mark should make on such a, a uniform, bright canvas. And they treat it a little precious. And like I said, they become hesitant, so. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel here and wipe off a little bit so I can see. I used actually, <laughs> I used um, water soluble graphite when I drew my chart out. So most of it's gone, but we'll do what we can. To, um, actually I can take a, my ruler. I think these are about an inch apart. Again, this is um, water soluble graphite, so it'll disappear or be absorbed, covered by the paint that I use. Okay. I think that's right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with Uh, 
a bright crystal. Tap it in a little water. Get a little paint on there. And this wet on wet technique will help be, it'll help the painting process be more efficient because it's wet and the paint will just simply glide on, which is great. Probably in some fashion you're using less paint. So I put quite a bit on the on the brush and I still have a little, I still have a lot left, but I'm done with this block. And that's my first, that's my darkest dark. Okay. So put a little bit of that back, clean my brush. My next darkest dark, which would be number eight or number two. Which if you remember from the video that I sent you on how to come up with your grayscale palette, you have to mix your Number five, actually your number seven rather, with your darkest dark. Okay, again, really economized paint usage here. Economical for sure, I still have quite a bit on there, but that particular square is completely covered, which is great. So this would be number seven. I'll try to put a little less paint on that time. Still had a little bit left over. All right, your next gray is your number six value or four. Number five. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Sorry for the movement in Medius Race. I'm already in process here. A little bit of schmutz on there. I scooped it up. I think it's a hair. I just scooped it up with the the brush. You can also keep tweezers on deck for picking up debris off of your work. Now I'm using a long handle brush, which is really great for easel work. Um, if you're working flat, then a short handle brush might be of your liking. 
you might actually <laughs> you might actually be fine with if you have a series of long handle brushes you might be fine with with that you can always just change your grip on a long handle brush you know um let's see what we got here four four six i'm I, i'm kind of using the number labeling system um that i saw in the video so but i'm working from dark to light which is how i paint now i'm having to i might not be putting enough paint on now but i'm trying to be economical here and not put too much on my brush <clears throat> I'm going for a nice even coating. <clears throat> Seven. Remember, you can always change the direction of your brush to get different marks. So on one hand, I'm using this to put down the maximum amount or get rather the maximum coverage. But then when I come here, and I just want to make a little line and just turn it on its axis, right? There you go. And now, number nine. I'm gonna go actually back in on a couple of these because it's a little bit line or space showing the canvas. So my paint could use a little spritzing. Remember when the more so acrylic dries dark or then what you start out with. And if you put more layers on, sometimes that can also darken the paint look for when it's, you know, when it's dry. 
So just be aware of that. And this is, again, this is, this is an exercise. So um, you can cut yourself a little slack, but just keep that in mind as you continue to work with this medium. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Yikes. Wipe that off. I had a little white paint on there. Okay. So the next task is to do a gradation with a blended transition, blended transitions. So not just these, not blocks. So um, I think for this one, they'll work from left to right. Okay, so. I'm going to use a little gloss medium to keep it more fluid. Remember, the more medium, gloss medium you use, the lighter the application of paint, meaning it's going to be a lot more translucent if you use a higher ratio of paint to medium. Like if you have more, you know, like a 50-50, that's, that's like a glaze percent or, you know, ratio. And I'm just gonna feather it, meaning I'm not putting as much pressure on it. Once we get to this outer edge of the white paint, oh, I'm just gonna put it down here. So the amount of pressure that I use painting this exercise is consistent. The amount of pressure that I use here changes. So it's heavy er at this beginning part to start on the left side. But as I get closer to the end of that margin or that border, um, it's a little lighter, okay? This is dry brushing, so the brush isn't even really wet and I'm just extending it a little bit with some light strokes here. Hardly any pressure on it at all, okay. So the next one in. Is my next to the lightest light. So and similarly, I'm going back over this first transition with just a little bit of pressure, dry brushing mostly, and then pretty much dry brushing through the whole thing, to be honest with you. You know, because the paint's wet, the medium is there helping the flow of the paint onto the surface. So you can kind of let the medium do the work. You just kind of take your, take your hand out of it in a way. You can guide the brush, but you're not putting a bunch of pressure down on it, very light strokes. I am gonna put a little bit more white on here and just, I might have to touch that again before I'm finished, but we'll see how it looks. It's very subtle, this change. 
I'm going to put another layer of that gray on there just for to make sure it's seen. I'm just lightly dusting. The paint will move no matter what. So you can take your time with it. Okay. So the next gray. May not show up too well um, on the camera. Maybe it will though. Um, it's hard to see with all the, with the light. The light's not really in the best position. So here we go with the next one again. I'm just gonna start out with some light strokes from the middle to that segue point, yeah? Again, you know, you know, it's lovely. To just there's not a whole lot of require. There's not a requirement for a whole lot of paint, which is great. And you know, you don't have to solely move your brush horizontally. You can come in here and do some vertical strokes too. Just light though, very light, very lightly, okay? I'm just gonna add a little bit of white just to kind of
All right, last one. Well, <clears throat> I can already see that I've got hardly any change between these. I mean, it's there, but it's very slight. So I'm just going to put a little bit of um, number two or a little bit of this one, number eight. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this just to see if I can lighten it up a little bit. Just a smidge. Nothing heavy. I'm just going to use my palette knife. So here's what my palette's looking like. It's a little messy, but um, everything's in its section. Okay. So I'm gonna. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and add a little bit more to this color. It's going to be for this, just to just to separate it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, this is all the amount I'm taking. We'll see what happens. Let's do it gradually. Doesn't have to be bright, you know, immediately. And I am gonna put, put this one on with my palette knife, just to start. It might be a little bit too light. A little mixing on the surface here. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. So it's lighter than this one, darker than this one. That's actually not a bad jump. Okay, so now <clears throat> my five and my six are a little too similar. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this seven, put it into the six a little bit, see if we can't lighten it up just a smidge. Just a smidge, that's why I'm using the, colors right next to each other as opposed to how we did it before or if you did it the way the video um, that I sent you indicated where you take your five mix it with your last or your lightest light and get the midtone between those two so in this case it'd be five six this is my seven All right you mix your five with your nine or whatever your lightest color is and get the middle then you mix the seven with the nine and get the eight. You miss the seven with the five and get the six. So I'm just gonna take a little seven, put it in with a little six and see if we can't make a distinction, just a slight, just a scotch, right? Between here and here, between my five and my six. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so again, just taking a little teeny bit Thank you. 
Mm, don't do it. I'm in the middle of a video. <laughs> Please don't park. Thank you, baby. Good girl. Thank you. So I'm actually going to use the paint off the um, palette knife. Mm hmm. Yeah. It looks better from here anyway. I don't know if you can see that, but um, well, that's a little bit too like this. I'm gonna take a little five and just add it. And I'm doing it on the palette so that I can um, be consistent, okay? Wait a minute, did I put it on the wrong thing? Yikes, I did put it on the wrong thing. Let's see. Okay. In the interest of time, I'm going to be cool with that and um, move on to the next part of this exercise, which is a sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sphere on the surface here. And I think I've mentioned to you before about using watercolor pencils to put down your sketch so that when you are um, done with the painting, it'll just be absorbed. It will have been just absorbed, right? So I'm going to, uh, this is actually an ink pencil, but it's black and it'll disappear. So let's, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put a quick little horizon line here. And, Make a few marks. It's bound to be right. Okay. And a little ellipse here for my shadow. You can always make corrections as you go along. Okay. So my light source is going to be coming from here. Right. So my highlight will be somewhere around there and so on. Okay. More crescent moon shapes. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to use a round to put the initial image down. Um, I might put it down with this kind of large round and then any details with this one. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on the brush. Oops, and I'm gonna come in with my darkest dark and pick that up and come in and start making my, my marks here for the circle. Come here and do this horizon line real quickly. And my ellipse. Now when you're sketching, it's better. I Because I know that I'm not going to show this part, um, I tend to just go ahead on and make overlap, make my ellipse overlap 
um, with the sphere, because I know I'm going to cover this part up, but the reason I do that is so I can get a consistent line as opposed to just trying to um, mark what's going to be seen, right? So for all intents and purposes, this is a, uh, a transparent sphere, if you will. Okay. All right, so I'm cool with this. Right, and I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with the negative space here in a second. Ouch. So now I'm gonna switch over. Actually doesn't look like I need my, my round, my smaller round. So I'm gonna put that back. And I'm gonna get my earlier brush, my bright. And I'm gonna go in and start working on my darkest shadow. So one of the things I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take my napkin, which is a little, my paper towel rather, which is a little moist at the moment. And I'm just gonna see if I can take off some of this black for my reflective highlight. So if you remember from the diagram, when the light, hits the sphere because it's waves, it goes around, right? It's not the light source is probably further up here. And so the light will hit the surface and then bounce back onto the sphere. So I'm just wiping it, wiping it down a little bit. It won't be like as white as your highlight, okay? It's muted, right? Not only because is it muted because it's not in direct line with the actual light that's hitting this that's interacting with the sphere but because it's reflected light it's not going to be as intense so you can make it lighter so i'm just going to come in here and start with some very light marks i have a little bit of gloss medium just for the spreading of it but not a whole lot. And this is the darkest part of the sphere. I'm actually going to change brushes. Oh, this one's nice, but I think I want to use a filbert. Um, my filbert filberts are great again because you can turn to the side and get a nice line use it uh flat and you can not only cover a lot of ground with this particular size this is a four but you've got this really beautiful rounded edge right so you have um, the length of that flat but you got that rounded edge, which is going to be great for a shape like this. So I'm going to wet it, come back in here, get a little bit more of this dark color, and kind of spread it around a little bit. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, some of this very light um, feathering, if you will, just to spread the paint past its imagined border and make way for another transition of color or your next gray, as it were, okay? I'm gonna come here and get this, this shadow here directly under the sphere, furthest away from the light. And that too has a little rounded, can follow the shape of the ellipse. And I'm feathering it out. And don't worry about if you've got, if it's too dark because you still have eight other grays that you can use, all right? This is just a map, as I like to call it, but it's the foundation. So 
it's important that it be strong. Okay. So now I'm going to come in with a little bit of this next gray. I'm just dusting it. Kind of dusting it in one direction so that it's smoothly. So that the visual is a smooth transition from that dark, dark to this next gray and then feathering it again on the other side to make for a smoother trans smooth transition. So remember my, I'm just gonna put it on here again. My highlight is here. I just wanna make sure I remember it so I don't, I don't paint over it or something. All right, so this is looking pretty decent. So I'm gonna move on. Next gray. I'm not really using a lot of paint. I'm just sort of staining the brush. You know, there's not a whole lot on here. It's a small painting too, so it's not necessary that you use a whole ton of paint. I just made it. I was just hoping I made enough to do the whole exercise, all three exercises, you know? Looks like I did. I put a little bit of that gray here <laughs> for the reflected light, but I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to leave the reflected light as it is because it's just um, a muted, well, it's a wipe off subtractive method where I had the darkest paint down and then I just used a paper towel to remove it so that it's a more muted highlight. Remember colors affect those colors that are around them. So whatever is around this color, if it's darker, then it's gonna make this look a lot lighter, this area, huh? So um, let's keep, Let's keep going on a home stretch here. Okay, really light. Like I hardly put any paint on. Now I'm feathering just very light strokes. I'm also making strokes that are curvilinear. It helps the eye and the brain, therefore, to understand the shape of the object. So if you're painting something that's curved, then um, you can use curved strokes, curved marks. OK. All right. Wait, I think I missed, I think I missed this step. I missed number five. So just come in here with number five. And what happens is you see that these were here. And next to all these other grays, it looks it looks light or lighter, huh? Just pressing my brush down to get a little more, get the rest of the paint from the brush. All right. Okay, some of these strokes with this lighter paint are actually coming into the area of the darker paint, just for a visual mix. And as you get to the 
highlight point. You'll use less and less paint, but still the same strokes, huh? Similar marks, similar direction, similar, actually less pressure, less and less pressure. Okay. Last three grays. So even though I'm using less paint because of the area that I have to cover, it's actually a thicker application of paint. Because again, the visual illusion will also, because it's there's more paint on the surface, it'll stick out more. Fat over lean, so thicker amounts of paint over thinner amounts of paint. If you think about how I started out with the wash, I'm just gonna cover this little, last little part, this little window, because it's a little dark, I'm just gonna cover it and then smooth out some areas. But I'm gonna leave it a little clunky and chunky. Okay. Oh. And now for my lightest light, my titanium white, I'm actually gonna spray it with a little water because it's it's an older paint. And so it's um doesn't flow as much. It doesn't flow like the newer paints. So you gotta just add a little moisture to it. Now I've kind of got a glop here, and I'm just gonna put it here. Okay, not awful. Okay. Now I need to tend to my shadow. I won't need as many changes in gray, but I am gonna start out with another application of my darkest dark, just to make this pop a little bit. Well, not just to make it pop, it's like, that's how it goes. But it, it's the illusion of three-dimensionality we're going for. And very light brushes of very light feathering strokes here. My next darkness gray. Bristle brushes are made for kind of harsh treatment, if you will. So it's back and forth. This dry brushing is really um, wonderful with bristle brushes. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the surface that the sphere is on. I'm just gonna make this a little softer of a
Okay. So let's see what color, what kind of gray should we put? You know, I don't know. I'm kind of liking that. Let me see if I can make something that's, well, I know what I'll do. I'm going to make, I'm going to use my second darkest gray wash. I'm just going to see what happens when I add it to the surface here. I'm just using a little water to move it down so I don't have to commit to a whole ton of paint. Just decided to put it down a little bit. No. Oops. I'll take a more. Okay. Thanks for watching.